Right now is Mark Parkinson. He's the president of the and CEO of the American Healthcare Association. This is a trade group that represents more than 13,000 nursing homes and assisted living facilities. He's also a former governor of Kansas. It's good to see you. Thank you for coming in. Thanks for having us, Kate. Really happy to get our message out. Thank you so much. And as if, if you've read anything or been following coronavirus, as we know people have, you know that a nursing home is really at the epicenter of one of the worst clusters of the virus so far, the one outside of Seattle, Washington. From your perspective, what went so wrong there? Well, Kate, the, the grim reality is that uh, for the elderly, COVID-19 is almost a perfect killing machine. Um, the death rate is not the 1% that we've heard about in Korea or the 3% that we've heard about in China. It's not even the 15% that we've heard about for people that are over 80. In our facilities, the average age is 84, and everyone has underlying medical conditions. So when you combine those factors together, we are dealing with perhaps the greatest challenge that we ever have in the history of our sector. Um, as a result, we have taken what we think are bold steps to do everything that we can to keep coronavirus from getting into buildings, and we're hoping that the actions that we have taken will be successful. Let's talk through that, because I, I, I know that I, we all, everyone has con questions and concerns about if it is such a problem, as you've just described, um, in such troubling terms, what can be done here and now? Because my concern is, if this can happen outside of Seattle, Washington, what is to stop this from happening at another nursing home facility right now? Right. There, there's two things that we're attempting to do. One is to keep the virus out of our buildings, and then second, to contain it if it gets into our buildings. But by far the most effective thing would be to keep it from getting in our buildings in the first place. So yesterday we issued guidance to our near 14,000 buildings. Uh, C CMS issued similar guidance last evening that is very different than normal activity. We are encouraging all people, including family members and loved ones, to not visit nursing homes and assisted living mm. facilities. The problem with COVID-19 is that a younger person can have the virus right. and not show any symptoms of having it. Uh, innocently visit, you know, doing a very lovely thing, which is visiting a loved one in a facility and spreading a disease that can be deadly. So until we get this at, under control, our new guidance as of today is to family members, to loved ones, don't visit the facilities. Instead, come up with an alternate way to communicate. Communicate by phone, by text, by Snapchat, by FaceTime. We want you to be in constant contact with your loved one. We just don't want you in the buildings possibly spreading the virus. What's the other, you said there was another one. What, what's the other guidance, the, guideline? The, the second guideline is just in terms of containment. Um, once it does appear, in, once it does occur in a building, then at that point we have to pull out all stops to make for, sure that it doesn't spread to other residents. What are, by, what are those stops? Because, you know, I'm look, looking at the statistics that we are just getting in still from the facility out of, outside Seattle, Washington. A majority of the residents there now are infected. 13 people, as we know, have died. And the last I think I saw last night was 65 employees are showing signs of symptoms. That's correct. I think there's almost 70 employees that are showing some signs, um, almost 50 residents that have been affected, uh, I think about 20 deaths right now. Our hope is that if this or as this spreads to other buildings, because as you unfortunately indicated, that, that is a likelihood, that we, we will be able to contain it on a much better basis than the very first outbreak, which obviously unfortunately occurred in that facility. And Mark, that can, can be it? done. Yeah. Can I ask it? You, you met with the vice president um, who's in charge of the task force on this last week. Do you have confidence in his ability to help? We do. We've asked the vice president, we've asked CDC, we've asked CMS to partner with us. Every request that we've made so far has been accommodated, specifically last night by them backing up our guidance to encourage and restrict people from our buildings. Our next requests have to do with equipment. Uh, as you've heard, there is a shortage of gowns and shortage of yeah. masks and hand sterilizer. We need to be a priority for those. There's also a shortage of tests for, for the virus. We need to be a priority for those. And so, we're, our, our requests so far have been accommodated, and we hope that they will continue to be. Really quick, in addition to, you said, please don't visit your loved ones in facilities right now. What do you say to someone who says, my mother, father, they are in a facility right now. I don't trust this. I'm gonna, I want to take them out. 
Well, if you take a, an older person out of a facility, particularly you know, our average resident at 85, lots of yeah. uh, problems, that in itself is dangerous. There are lots of challenges just from transferring a person in that condition. But yeah. what you're then doing is you're taking them out into a community that's not at all controlled, where COVID virus is probably present. We're going to learn that there are many more cases than have been reported right now. And mm -hmm. I think you're actually exposing them to a greater risk. I would strongly encourage people to not do that. Mark, thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to lean on you heavily to, for more guidance on, on what, what you are seeing on the ground from your member communities. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Kate. We appreciate you getting the word out. Thank you.